Okay, I'm in the Orlando area. This old dilapidated house is on a hospital property. They're gonna tear it down anyway. So, uh, here's where they're going in. And there's no electricity here on site, and I don't have a generator, so. What they're gonna, what they did is they let me borrow some uh, battery-powered saws. Uh, so also, I won't have my vacuum cleaner today. I'm gonna have to deal with that, but um, I don't think it's gonna be that big a deal. Okay, let me get started sawing. Okay, I have them exposed, and it's just this what uh, two and a half, three feet high. They're not in any of the adjacent places or up higher or anything like that. They just go up to this window and they're not to the left at all. So it's just this space between these two beams. Got some honey, some brood, some dry comb down below. So thankfully, I'm not even going to need the vacuum cleaner anyway. Um, and there's not a ton of honey in here to deal with, which sometimes I'm actually glad about that. Alright, there you go. I'm going to start cutting this out and uh, saving some of the good comb and good nectar for them. You know, nectar and pollen. Good deal. I'm sure the queen's in here somewhere. I'll find her. At this point, I have most of the comb cut out, except for this little area right here, right under the window. And uh, I have about four frames of comb saved. And I'm looking for the queen as I go in this bunch up here. A little bit like uh, finding a needle in a haystack, of course, but uh, I'm in no huge rush. She'll turn up. Not too many places she can go unless she flies close by, you know, and I'm keeping a lookout for that. There's some bees gathered up here, but I think that's just confused bees because they, their home is disrupted, of course. But uh, I always keep a lookout for the queen flying a few feet away and a bunch of bees gathered on top of her. But I don't really see that yet, so she's probably still in here. keep sorting through them carefully, sifting through them. All right, so at this point, uh, you know, they have no place to go except for my hive, so it's a little bit chaotic right now, of course. But as you can see, uh, they are getting loyal to my hive. And I sprayed some natural almond oil repellent after I got all the bees out to that void. And uh, now they don't want to land there anymore. And nor are these, nor are they going to want to land in these adjoining areas because I sprayed some almond oil based repellent, natural repellent in those areas too. And I looked around up here. There's no sign of any pile of bees with a queen or anything like that. So they're just going to have to uh, familiarize themselves with my hive, come to the conclusion that there's no other option and all this chaos will die down at nightfall and they'll all be in my box, believe it or not. And more than likely the queen is going to be in there at, 
after it's all said and done. Just, just odds are. So, you know, again, I didn't have my vacuum cleaner on this removal. Uh, I don't have any electricity here, so I probably would have vacuumed them instead of uh, having this many flying bees, but uh, oh well. Okay, it's about time to close the wheel on these girls. There's just like one or two stragglers flying around right now. A little bit more calm than the uh, previous clip, huh? <laughs> it's amazing what uh, nightfall and a little bit of time will do. So here's where they were. No more bees. All right, successful removal. And I appreciate the Lonnie and uh, Debbie allowing me to use the battery powered saw, you know, the circular saw. That thing worked like a champ. It was a Makita, had two batteries. Boy, I couldn't believe how it whipped through that wood. I may have to get one of those. All right, thanks for watching.